どちらも本音じゃないよ秘術師を見下す君それを否定する君どちらを本音にするのかは君がこれから選択するんだよ You're always one decision away from a totally different life. Usually, whenever I see this quote, it's said in the context of improving your life, of getting out of whatever slump you're in, and getting closer to where you want to be. But it's not exclusive to living a good life. If all of us are one decision away from a different life, then that includes a bad one too. Both the Joker and the Punisher have echoed a similar sentiment before, and in the newest season of Jujutsu Kaisen, we get to see this firsthand how someone who claimed to fight for the weak would go down a much darker path. A path that Suguru Geto believes will still get him to his end goal. Before we head into the video, just a reminder that there will be spoilers for Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, specifically the hidden inventory and premature death arc. If you don't want to see any of that, then go ahead and check out these other videos I made on Blue Lock and Dragon Ball Z. Links will be in the description. I've demonstrated there's no difference between me and everyone else. All it takes is one bad. That's how far the world is from where I am. Just one bad day. This clip from DC's animated movie Batman the Killing Joke was meant to highlight that as much as we want to distance ourselves from these more extreme characters, all that separates us is one really bad day. After all, everyone experiences hardship in one form or another, but there's definitely levels to this. For Batman, watching his parents die at such a young age lit a fire within him and led him down the path of fighting crime. But what about Suguru Geto? During the basketball scene at the beginning of the season, we see him and Gojo talk about the purpose of a jujitsu sorcerer. Geto believes that society should be structured in order to ensure the survival of the weakest. The weak help each other and discourage those that are too strong, is an exact quote from Geto himself. But Gojo isn't having any of it. After mentioning how exhausting it is to look after the weak, he calls Geto out right to his face. He states that only weak people assign responsibilities to those that are strong, and tells him that he's trying to make himself feel better by pretending like he's doing the right thing, the moral thing. Things get a little heated, and the two really don't see eye to eye on this. And of course, the topic resurfaces multiple times throughout the season, but by the end of the season, Geto's way of thinking is nowhere to be found. So, why the sudden change? The turning point was when Rico entered his life. Actually, it's when she exited his life, but you, you get the point. He goes through all the effort of escorting and protecting her, and then still decides to offer her the option of living a normal life, which she happens. Happily accepts. In the midst of hearing her praises or understanding her dreams and aspirations, and seeing her cry tears of relief and joy, she's gone. Her life, as well as all the hopes she had for a normal life, gone in an instant. And we can see that Geto's obviously shocked by this traumatic experience. I mean, who wouldn't be? But as the saying goes, when it rains, it pours. If her death wasn't enough, he would later find out that Rico didn't really need to act as a vessel, anyways, because another one would have already been born. Put simply, her death was pointless. So, how does one cope when they feel like someone else's blood is on their hands? Not to mention that they never needed to be put in a position to die in the first place. Now, I'm no psychologist, but I see a few options. Here are the more extreme ones. Option A you internalize it. You blame yourself and completely change the way you carry yourself. Maybe the guilt eats away at you until you can't take it anymore. Maybe it changes you, for better or for worse. Option B, you externalize it. You blame someone else, a group of people, or even an environment. Now, I can't guarantee that this is easier. But I can understand why it seems that way. Geto could blame Toji, but it's not that satisfying when you know that he met his death soon after. And this is when you start expanding your horizons. Maybe it's not a problem with one person, maybe it's multiple people, maybe it's a problem with society. There's a lack of accountability with this kind of thinking. And in episode 4, you can see why this way of thinking actually gives him a way out of this. He says that there needs to be a point to killing, especially if you're a jujitsu sorcerer. So, how can one justify killing all non sorcerers? Is it possible for two people to look at the same data and come to wildly different conclusions? The short answer is yeah, of course. The long answer is that there's plenty of reasons why two people could come to different conclusions. Our lived experiences, values, and beliefs are some of the few things that can affect our ability to arrive at conclusions. It's important to remember this because it gives us the opportunity to understand where people are coming from and why they think the way they do. Here, Geto is more or less working with the same information as the other sorcerers. He knows that humans are responsible for creating curses because they're unable to properly control their own cursed energy. But when he talks to Yuki about this in episode 5, we see him come to a different conclusion than her. He's at first intrigued by the idea of treating the cause, which in this case are humans, rather than treating the symptoms, but doesn't really resonate with the idea of teaching humans how to control their cursed energy. Instead, 
he pitches eliminating all non-sorcerers. And a big reason for this is because the loss of Rico is still weighing heavily on him. Not to mention all the disdain he has for exercising and ingesting cursed spirits, which he himself says tastes awful. Why go through all this pain to help people who don't want to help themselves? People who don't really understand or appreciate the sacrifices that these sorcerers make every day. And although I won't say Yuki is responsible for causing this to happen, she certainly doesn't help by mentioning that eliminating them would be the simplest solution, and that it would force everyone to become sorcerers. Unfortunately, when you entertain an idea like that, to someone who's had to deal with everything that Ghetto has, it's not hard to see why his moral obligation to humans started to waver. Not to go on too much of a tangent, but cults and scammers both operate off this kind of principle. By preying on very human emotions, you can lure people who are in a bad place to join whatever it is you got going on. But let's get back on subject. It's even more interesting when you factor in that Ghetto isn't going on some sort of rampage purely fueled by revenge or hatred. He truly thinks that this is the best way forward. Almost all of us like to think of ourselves as good people, but what defines a good person? Is it the actions we do or the intent we have? If we lie to someone to protect them, does that make us good? Well, what if we simply follow the rules, but the rules inflict harm on others? The point here is that it's so much more than a surface level discussion that people make it out to be. It's briefly talked about at several points throughout the season, and in almost all instances, Gojo actually seems to be against taking the moral high ground. I think it's perfectly understandable to have some of the feelings that Gojo has, especially after Riko's death. But Geto never really entertains the idea. Maybe because deep down, he's worried he agrees with it. He continues to suppress these feelings until he hits his tipping point, where he makes a decision that changes the course of his life. Even though Gojo might have shared some of these feelings initially, he doesn't act on them. To shut them down would mean ignoring a very human feeling. The feeling of being ostracized and burdened by those who are beneath you. That feeling of exhaustion on a mental, physical, and emotional level. And it's in his exhaustion that Geto looks for a better way. A simpler way. More or less, his main goals haven't necessarily changed, just his methodology. You can make the argument that although brutal, his way is the best way forward. After all, nature itself is brutal, and it's a constant battle where only the victor lives another day. He even refers to his ideas as evolution, the necessary and gradual development of society towards something more. But to me this just feels like he's taking the easy way out. He's stronger than almost any non-sorcerer, and there is really no competition. The only reason he wouldn't be able to end all of them is because of Gojo. And the reason Gojo wouldn't be able to end all of them is because he chooses not to. It's a troubling reminder that all humans have the capacity for evil, but it's necessary to accept that. To accept that if put in a different environment and subjected to different life experiences, you might even be capable of doing some pretty bad things. No amount of rationalizing can change that. But at the end of the day, even if it was a really, really bad day, the choice is still yours. I'm curious to know how you guys feel about this. Do you think everyone's really just one bad day away from going down a different path, or is that an oversimplification of it? Feel free to let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe for more videos like this. If you're new here, I recommend watching this video I made on Blue Lock and how it talks about ego in a way that you don't really see done very often. With all that said, thanks for watching and stay winning.